screen is. Ah, okay, found it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another live class for the Homeschool Quest. Please go ahead and post in the comments where you're joining us from and who you have joining us today. We'd love to give you a shout out. I'm going to mention everyone here so that they can all see this live. Okay, and if you haven't already downloaded the guide for this class, I'm going to go ahead and post the link for that in the comments too because you will want to go ahead and sign up for that to get the free guide. It's going to make things a lot simpler for you to be able to keep this information and actually apply it. This uh, class is going to be teaching botany, life skills, because you're going to be learning growing, problem solving, observation, and science. So you really don't want to miss it. Go ahead and drop in the comments where you're joining us from. I'm in North Idaho. Alicia, where are you joining us from? I'm in Northern California. So not too far away. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay, it looks like we have 61 people here with us, so go ahead, post in the comments where you're joining us from. And if you have ever grown a watermelon in a pot, tell us, have you ever grown a watermelon or another plant in a pot? Something? Have you ever done a summer project like that before? Just want to give everyone a chance to join in before we get started. Okay, someone from Alabama. Let's see here. Just trying to see your guys' names. If you guys want to go ahead and allow StreamYard to access your names, it will show up for me over on StreamYard. So it looks like we've got Corelli, uh, Amanda from Alabama, and it looks like Corella is from Missouri. We've got Nikki from Iowa. Ashley all in Southern California. She's in a high desert area. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. I hope you guys really enjoy this class. Okay, Alicia, I think that we're ready to get started. That is great. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start presenting to you guys and share with you a little bit about growing sweet memories. Not just growing food, but growing memories with your kids. So I'm going to be sharing how to grow a watermelon in a pot because lots of us don't have a lot of space to grow. And if you've ever grown something in the past and you didn't quite make it happen where maybe that plant failed or maybe something happened that stopped the growing from happening, maybe the wrong season, maybe it got really cold and the plant was just starting to take off, just encourage you that I'm so glad you're here. We want to make growing fun because there's so many things that happen when you grow things with your kids. You not only develop skills together, but it's something that can last for a lifetime for you. And I'm Alicia. Um, like I said earlier, I live in Northern California. I did live in Southern California for over 20 years. So I've had a couple different um, places and places that I have um, grown. This is our first garden in Los Angeles where our backyard was super tiny. And this is my oldest son and my daughter. And my oldest son said to me, hey, mom, I really want to start a garden. And my first reaction to him was, honey, mommy kills everything that isn't um, a kid. If it's green, I'm not going to make it happen. But here I am today to say that if I had had this class, 10 years ago, if I had had the help and instruction that I love to give to families, especially homeschooling families that are busy, um, I would have been able to excel in my garden so much sooner and so much quicker. So today I help families um, grow backyard gardens, help that to become a reality. So what are we going to do today? Today we're going to talk about why growing a watermelon is a great benefit for you and your family. We're going to talk about the basics of growing, how to set up the space for success. Uh, we're going to talk about how to plant it. I've got a checklist for you in the download that you can get um, with this, this course. Um, I've got tips for helping you plant. 
Um, I also have a bit of a watermelon timeline to help you know when to plant it out and how to harvest. So all of that information is going to be something we're going to talk about, and then it's part of the downloads that are with this course. So let's talk really quick. Why grow a watermelon? We talked a little bit about just a few moments ago that there's some great life skills and some great health. When we share with our kids how to grow things, um, going from seed all the way to a fruit and a veggie, it shows that, that life can happen and we can do it with patience. We can have responsibility in helping things grow and we can learn by nurturing the things around us. So growing our own food is not only healthy, it gives us energy from the goodness of the food, but it also is wonderful being outside, helping and loving each other as we're learning how to grow. Can I, can you just like share in the comments, like, yes, this is what I want. This is why I'm here. I want to learn how to grow not only a watermelon, but how to grow things with my kids in a garden. Um, just share that in the comments. Yeah, um, Marla says that she hasn't been able to keep any plants, but she wants to know how she can grow one in Texas. And we have a couple other people here from Texas as well. Nice. I, okay, so Texas, I love it. I've got lots of um, recommendations for Texas, for Arizona areas, for the high desert, um, the person who's from Southern California in the high desert. So um, can you remind me to talk about that at the end? Or yes, just I will. a little bit? Awesome. That would be great. Thank you. So. Um, it is possible to grow in Texas and in very hot regions. Um, the key with growing and what the information that I'm going to be talking about right now, you're going to transfer that to a different time period in your year. So we're going to, we'll, we'll talk about that at the end. Okay. So everything I'm telling you about, you can do. It just may be you're walking into a really hot space right now with the temperature, and that is the key, very scientifically, that is the key for your growth. And you might be starting this process in a few months from now instead of starting it right now. Does that make sense? Yeah, that totally makes sense. It looks like we have okay. a couple new yeah. people joining us. We've awesome. got Leah from Louisiana. We've got another person Great. from Texas. Hi, Monica. Uh, we've got Anna from New Zealand. Um, Courtland from Texas as well, and Lindsay from Texas. So welcome to the live class, guys. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you. Well, today you all are going to learn just a little bit more about what kinds of watermelons are great to grow and why. I'm going to also share the basics of planting out watermelon seeds. One of the cheapest ways you can grow a garden is by buying seeds. And I'm going to share the resources and some downloads that I have for you if you go ahead and um, uh, add your email and you will get that download immediately. And I'll go so ahead how and do we get, yeah. Share the link again for that, you guys. So let me go ahead and share the link for that again in case you missed it. Any of the That's downloads great. she mentions, she has a link to that. Super easy for you guys to get that. It looks like we do have a question. Oh, wonderful. Someone says, they are so excited to learn new information. They can't seem to grow directly in the garden, but the wicking tubs, they had a ton of success. Another person says, and as an apartment dweller, she has zero yard, so she needs to grow everything in pots. So it looks like okay, some people great. are really interested to learn the information you're telling today. I love it. I love it. Okay, so as I talk, I'm going to go around to talking about small spaces, and this is why growing a watermelon in a small space, you can actually do this on a porch in a small space. Um, and I'm going to talk about how you're going to have that happen. Um, so getting started, here's a picture of a watermelon. And when I think of watermelon as a kid, I remember sitting seeds as far as possible outside and having competitions with my brothers on who could put their seeds farthest. Um, and seeds are definitely the beginning of our watermelon. And it's also the end result. A lot of watermelons nowadays are seedless, but the ones that you would grow in your garden We'll have seeds in it because um, that's really how watermelons come, right? So let's go ahead and take a look. Get the downloads. There's some step-by-step -step guides that I'm going to share with you. Something that you need to get started, especially if you're going to be growing in a container, um, is to have a container. Or maybe you're going to be starting a watermelon in ground, in the dirt. Or maybe you have a raised 
the important thing is, is you're going to have a space for that watermelon to grow. And then the third most important thing about the watermelon is to have healthy soil. And we're going to talk more about that and the seeds and a watering can or a hose. So starting to do just one project, one watermelon, one plant will get you to a place that you have more confidence to grow more in the future. And that is really my hope with this, is that every time you plant something, there's the basics of each thing that are basically the same. You want the right container or space. You want healthy soil. You want seeds that are gonna grow in the right timing and you definitely want water. And when you have that four part system, it's a simple gardening method that I teach in all of my courses, then you have a space for success. So let's talk about the most important first step is the watermelon seed itself. Um, the watermelon seed has absolutely everything it needs inside of it to last for the first two weeks of growth. And I don't know, can you see this watermelon seed? This is a, a watermelon seed and it is huge. Water, a sun seed are so tiny. It's hard to imagine that it actually has the nutrition, like I call it a snack pack. That everything inside of a seed is a snack pack for that seed to grow. Just like our kids need snack packs when we go on trips, right? The watermelon seed has its own snack pack. So when the watermelon seed is planted in the soil, something amazing happens. When that soil is wet, the outside shell of the watermelon seed actually gets softened and it's able to sprout roots going down. It knows what direction to go. Actually shoots a, a seedling, a sprout going up towards the light. The roots then take the water and the nutrients from the soil and they actually continue to grow. And that suit keeps going towards the sunlight. It's absolutely a miracle how things come from seeds. And this whole process is called photosynthesis. And that basically means that the plant, as soon as it sprouts, after that two weeks, it starts to use all of the light. And it starts to create and make its own food using a process with the carbon dioxide and the soil and the water pulling up the nutrients from the soil and oxygen leaving the, the, the leaves, it creates a beautiful process called photosynthesis. And the amazing part is, is it all starts with that seed. And the planting of this one watermelon seed awakens inside of it when it's got water and soil. So it's just an amazing process. Any questions so far? about this and the miracle of sharing that with your kids. Any questions? Do you have a suggestion on where they should source their watermelon seeds? That is a great question. Um, I bought these different types of watermelon seeds. I'm going to talk about different kinds of watermelon seeds that I would recommend and why. Um, all of these, um, this one I got at Azure Standards. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with Azure and um, actually get their stuff monthly um, from them. I picked up these seeds from, um, there's lots of different great places. Baker's Seeds um, is a one that I absolutely love. Um, I went to a local nursery and picked up these specifically. This one is Lake Valley. Um, but I like to go for organic. And I like the types of seeds. And I'm going to talk about what type because each type um, will have a certain amount of length that it takes for it to actually grow a watermelon. And some of you live in spaces like North Dakota, um, places in the United States that you have a very short growing season. You want a watermelon that only takes 70 days for it to be completely ready to rock um, and eat. So some of you have longer growing spaces. And so for those, you can do a watermelon to 120 days, like a Jubilee. So let's talk about the different kinds of watermelons. Um, there's a different taste, there's a different shape, there's different growing conditions. Um, the first watermelon that I wanna talk about is called the Crimson Sweet. And I have um, those seeds right here. 
And as you can see, it's a baby watermelon in this picture. This type of watermelon is really popular because it's super sweet. It's got a dark green rind and it's very red inside. Um, this watermelon grows depending on the temperature. It needs it hot. It also needs quality soil and lots of watering because it's made out of water, lots of water. The second um, plant, the second watermelon type that I would recommend is called a sugar baby. And a sugar baby are those tiny round ones that we see in the grocery store. Um, the nice thing about a sugar baby is that it is ready to eat in 70 days. So this one is a perfect one for a small garden or a container and a quicker return for what you're doing in the garden. When you have kids that are just ready to try something and you want to encourage gardening, the sugar baby is a fun one. Any questions so far? All right. The Jubilee is a third one that I'd recommend. And the Jubilee are the long watermelons. And what I love about the Jubilee is that it's ripe, it's juicy, it's sweet, it's mild. Let's not pull over on a good watermelon. It only takes 85 days to mature. So um, that is a great to know because some of them take a lot longer. And the last one I'd recommend is called an early moon bean. Um, it takes 70, 75 days and it has a very crisp um, flesh inside. So here are some just recommendations. There are lots of different types of watermelons out there, but these are some that I found that could work in different regions of the United States. And if in New York, you're in New Zealand, like we have someone here from New Zealand, um, I would have to take a look at your climate just a little bit to figure out. But I have a feeling somewhere in your year, you have a hot, hotter climate where there's maybe, maybe 90 to 100 days, particularly that is over 80 degrees. And that helps for hot um, crops like watermelon to grow. Any questions so far? All right. So Doesn't look like anyone. Plan? Seems like you're doing a great job presenting. No one has any questions. That's great. Okay. <laughs> hey, I love questions. So if you have them, I love them. So um, bring those on. Um, how to plant a watermelon seed. This is how you're going to teach your kids. And if you have some of your kids watching, this is how you do it. I have a tiny pot here. Can you see it? I have a tiny pot. And in my tiny pot, um, I don't usually use a tiny pot when I'm starting out a watermelon seed. To show you an illustration, I don't want to use a huge pot sitting here. You just take your finger and you make a hole inside of your finger. And at the bottom of that hole, it's the same size as your finger. You're going to pop in your watermelon seed and just cover it. And that is how you go ahead and do a watermelon seed. But one really cool tip is before you even plant your watermelon seed, put it in water for about 30 minutes to soak. And as you do that, what you're doing is you are actually helping the coating of the, the outside cell that protects it to start loosening up and to let it know, hey, it's time to grow. You're gonna put it in the container and you're gonna put it in the sun. It loves to be warm. It needs to be at least 65 degrees um, or hotter in the soil for germination, for the sprouting to actually happen. It also needs soil that's easy to move. Like, have you ever been around dirt? Like we have clay. I don't know how many of you have some clay um, dirt around your area. It's very red clay. And if I were to put this watermelon seed inside of my dirt that's dead and has no nutrients, it wouldn't be able to sprout and have its roots move through the soil. So it's super important that when you pick out soil, that it's actually able to move consistently and let the soil, let the roots move through the soil. So planting an inch inside the ground or into your soil and watering it consistently is really important. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about watering, especially with kids and fun, because watering can get kind of out of control sometimes, right? <laughs> Um, and then you need to wait for five to 10 days so that it can germinate. And this patience piece of it is super important for families. 
um, that's where my kids learned that they had to kind of sit back and watch nature happen. Um, let's talk a little bit about watering. Now, I think of roots as a pair of socks. So just imagine that you have a pair of socks on and it's wet and rainy outside and you don't put on shoes and your socks get soaking wet and your toes are soaking and then you come in the house and you leave your socks on. How does it feel? So gross, awful, yeah. terrible. That's what happens to the root of your plant when you water it too much. When the roots have too much water, they can't move the nutrients from the soil up the stem to make it grow. So when you are watering with your kids, share with them the idea that they do not want soggy roots, just like they don't like soggy socks right? And just remember that too much water doesn't help anyone and too little water doesn't help either. They definitely need a little bit of water to be able to move the nutrients through the sun. The second most important thing for your watermelon is sunlight. You need to pick a spot that has six to eight hours of sun a day. It has to be direct sun. So if you're on a porch, if you only have an apartment, I'm so hoping that you are facing the sun, um, oftentimes it's south facing, but if you have six to eight hours of sun, you can grow anywhere. I hope that's a great tip for a lot of you guys. The next thing is support. With a watermelon, you need to have, if you only have a small space, then you need to have like a tomato cage that costs five bucks, like at Home Depot or at Lowe's. And that tomato cage will be the support that your watermelon plant grows up. This is going to help with aeration so that if you live in a space that has like a lot of humidity, you're going to allow the leaves to have space to aerate and not mold to be able to have a disease on your watermelon plant. Um, another thing about having it growing up is the bees have such a better time finding all the flowers to pollinate because they have more, more spaces, they can find them easier. So you actually get more produce, produce from the support going on. So I have, That's resources. A neat tip. Thank you. I have resources to help you in the download that um, was shared in a link for you. And in these resources, you'll find a materials list. You'll find a five simple steps to growing your watermelon with dates so that you can keep track of the different um, parts of growing your watermelon. There's also a checklist, so you don't miss out on any part of this watermelon growing of what I've talked about. There's also a space that your kids can step out every month, how they see their watermelon um, plant growing. And then finally, um, how to know when your watermelon is ripe, which I think is one of the biggest questions um, is it ready to rock? Is it ready to harvest? And I have a page with that. So just remember that with your kids, use this as a time to actually discuss each stage of your watermelon. And as you guys are learning, grab a few books on growing seeds or growing things and use those as your read aloud time. Um, every month, sit down and just sit and watch. Um, I think using your five senses and helping your kids to smell the watermelon, touch the watermelon or the dirt or the um, be able to touch the water. Any of the times that we can add more to the learning process, it's really expanding their observation skills and then eventually really helping them with problem solving. I love to celebrate every milestone of what's going on with things that I'm growing. The first flower, the first small fruit, and then just appreciate all the work that your plant is doing for you as you're supporting it with water and with sun and with a support system and have fun with your kids. This is a picture of my three kids 10 years ago. My oldest now is almost 21. And just yesterday, he was in uh, the garage and I had like harvested some garlic and he's, he had worked on an organic farm when he was a senior in high school. And he was like, mom, you're not doing the garlic right. 
So if you guys are on Instagram at all, you can follow me at create my garden. And I did a reel yesterday where my 20 year old son told me on how I could do garlic better. But the best memories I have of my kids um, now even is in the garden. Um, and even my youngest who has autism, he's 14. He and I connect most when we're outside and he's outside talking to me and we're in the garden. It's a space that he and I can both breathe. So I just wanna encourage you that yes, the garden can be really overwhelming, but if you start with one plant and you start learning and growing together, you might just have your oldest kid coming home from college telling you and schooling you on how you should grow things because they're learning how to grow things too. Um, I have other offers on my um, website and other things that you can grow different projects with your kids. But in order to, to be able to get any of those things, I just recommend grabbing the, the freebie that's a part of this course and um, connecting up in that way. So grab the freebie. You can grab me on Create My Garden on Instagram or Create My Garden on Facebook. If you want to DM me or um, reach out or do a shout out, I love, um, love it when people are connected with me and have questions. So. so they had some questions about growing in Texas and Southern California. Do you wanted me to remind you to give them yeah. some tips about that? Yes, excellent. Okay, so um, it's really important to know the timing of your plants. So the timing of your plants, your watermelon seeds love it in the hot weather. And in Texas, I'm assuming it's way over 100, 110, and it's almost too hot. Am I right on that? Are there any responses yes? Am I right on hot weather in Texas? Um, my recommendation is to go ahead and find out um, when the temperature, the average high and the average low of every month. If your average high and average low are between, let's say, 60, 70, 65, 70, and um, 95 for Texas, that's when I would go ahead and plan on planting your watermelon seeds, and you will have great success. Um, otherwise, I would start planting them like in March. I really need to look at your temperatures to see where in Texas you are, and formulate that, but looking at your highs and lows will help you determine what garden season you have, because it's not fall, it's not winter, it's not spring and summer that are determining when to plant these things. It's really your temperature, it's very scientific. Um, and I teach that in all of my courses, because I think that's the base of every great garden is knowing when to plant things according to the season that you live in. Well, thank you guys. If you have any other questions, please post them in the comments. Uh, you can get the replay if you joined us a little bit later. If you want to see the beginning of this class, you can get the replay by going ahead and signing up for uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel. The recording will be available over there. I'm just dropping a link to that. So be sure to download the guide, sign up for and subscribe to YouTube so that you can be able to get the replay for this class. Thank you so much for joining us and letting everybody know about how they can easily grow and create memories with their kids. Do you guys have any other questions before we go? Oh, someone says it's been great. Mm, thank you. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it, you guys. Some people said that it's already in the hundreds where they live. <laughs> Well, it's a little bit colder over here today, so I'm, I'm, I'm in the you. I wish it was warmer. <laughs> yes, thank you as well. Everyone really enjoyed your class. I'm going to go ahead and say bye now. We're going to see you next week for another live video.